Although fictionalized, the following film is inspired by actual events. You're doing good, Corey. Come on. I'm really great. All right, let's give another push. Now push. Hold your breath. Push, push. That's right, that's good. Here it comes. All right, now take a break, take a break. All right. Well, says 140, measure 70 over 35. Okay, Corey, let's go again. All right, one more time. Push, push. All right, now push. Push, push, Corey. That's good, Corey. That's good. Here. Sir, Mrs. Maddox, you've got yourselves a son. He's so tiny. Hey, buddy. Hey, dear. Look at the crystal. Pulse is 140, pressure 70 over 35. Okay, Corey. They're going to take him up to the nursery now. Okay, stay just a little bit longer. Your blood pressure's going crazy. You promise if I saw you through this, you'd do what I say and let me take care of you. you were gonna tune my engine this morning. Yeah, sure. Yeah, just give me a minute. Wow, it sure is a nice garden. Thanks. Boy, he sure is dark, isn't he? He's out in the sun all day. I'm Indian from my grandpa. We're gonna drive in overland. Pick up a part for Rachel's car. But you promised Christopher you'd take him fishing. And I can't do another load of wash till you fix the washing machine. I will, okay? Some other time. See you, buddy. Bye, Dad. Be in town.
Where is it? Where is it? The light bill's overdue, and they've cut the heat on us twice. I'm so sick of this. I'm sick of you. trouble since the day you brought him home. Jack, it's true, honey. You two are always pecking at one another. You must have broken up every week for the past 15 years. Yeah, but he's never said divorce before. Pre Preloading white trash. Good for nothing. How do you really feel about him, Dad? Well, what do you want to do? Doesn't seem like it's up to me. Well, you look awful. When was the last time you took your medication? I don't know. Well, we'll just go get your stuff and you can move back in. I'm a grown woman, Mom. I can't just move home like a kid. What else are you going to do? How are you going to support yourself? You've never held a job in your life. You didn't finish high school. Please don't start that again. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, Corey. Be realistic. Oh, it's not a permanent thing anyway. I give that Stuart one week and he'll be shuffling back in here with all hearts and flowers like all the other times. I hate this bed. It's either that or the floor. Christopher. Christopher, get back in bed. I want to go home. I want Daddy. I know you do, honey. Why doesn't Daddy love me now? Oh, Chris. Your Daddy loves you with all his heart. And so do I. Nothing's ever going to change that no matter what happens, you understand? How come he's not here? I'm here. Nothing's ever going to change that either. Uh, I always hate to see the breakup of a relationship, particularly one as long standing as this one, and involving a child. However, Given Mr. Maddox's attitude, it is apparent that no reconciliation is possible. Therefore, I'm granting the petition for divorce. Mr. Maddox, you will pay alimony, child support equal to one half. Paying her sin. I beg your pardon, Mr. Maddox? I said I'm not paying her sin. You are out of order, Mr. Maddox. She doesn't deserve alimony. She was a lousy housewife. She never cleaned, never cooked, never Stuart. did nothing. I don't care if you lived in a pigsty. You will pay alimony. And then I won't pay child support. I don't... I don't even think that kid is my child. You know Christopher's your child. He don't look anything like me. Everybody says so. Everybody who, Rachel? Nobody's ever said that. Quiet, both of you. Are you serious about this, Mr. Maddox? All right, fine. You brought this up, Mr. Maddox, you will clear it up. Court orders you to take a paternity test at any hospital you choose here in South Carolina. And 
and Andre really wants baby sister. And she says her mom's been talking to the stork, but she won't know if she's having a baby until she pees in the cup and it turns blue. <laughs> Uh, eat your beans, Christopher. Hello? Mama? Yeah. Why does Andrew's mom yes, have a pee in the cup to have a baby? Tori? Ask Grandma. Hello? Grandma, why do they do that? I I'm sorry, I don't understand. Well, I don't know, honey. Why don't you ask your grandpa? Uh huh. Yeah, well, of course, yeah. Grandpa? All right, then. You'll have to wait till you're older. Christopher, you've had enough beans. You want to go on out and play? Mm-hmm. Okay. Thanks, Grant. That was the hospital. They messed up the tests. What do you mean, messed up? That's what the lady said. She said the results came back saying Stuart's not Christopher's father and I'm not his mother. Can you believe that? Pinky operation. Can't tell a bypass from a bedpan. Well, she was real apologetic about it, but now we're going to have to go back down there and do it all over again. I don't even want to be in the same room with Stuart. How you doing here, Bubba? Good. How about, uh, we try to take that one out, eh? Okay. Now, you be careful, man. Hold on. Uh, Cory? Uh-huh. The lab. The test results came back. Oh, finally. They came back the same. We've conducted the tests four times and even factoring in human error. The results are the same exactly. Blood type, chromosomal information. Stuart cannot be Christopher's father and you are not his mother. I'm sorry. How the hell did this happen? If she's not his mother, then why did she walk out of this very hospital almost eight years ago with that baby in her arms? Ma'am, I only deal with tests. Will you find somebody who can tell us why she walked into this place with one baby inside her and walked out of it with another? Hey. hey. All done. Well, there you go. Mama, we can live here. Looking at him, telling myself he's not my son, but he is my son. I couldn't love anybody more than I love him. But there's some lady out there somewhere who's his real mom, and she's got my baby. Is she gonna take Chris from me? And am I supposed to take the boy she raised away from her? It's the child I carried. The child I prayed for. But I couldn't live without Christopher. Oh, my, what am I supposed to do? Miss Max? Miss Addison? I can just imagine what you're going through. Ma'am, let me assure you, as of now, you will not go through it alone. I appreciate that, Mr. Francis. Now, what do you want me to do? Well, I, I want to find my baby, my little boy. I don't know if he's healthy or, or sick, or even if he's still alive. Well, now, you must consider what to do when we find him. I mean... Mr. Francis, we realize this is a can of worms here. We didn't open it. But we're going to have to deal with it. Now, the first thing to address is finding Corey's birth child. Of course, Mrs. Addison. It is vital to ascertain the child's whereabouts. Then, of course, you will have decisions to make. But I can promise you in the meantime, we'll make that hospital pay for all your suffering. Well, that'd be nice, but I just want to make sure my, my baby's happy and healthy. Well. Just leave everything to me. I don't know. What does he mean, leave everything to him? 
How do we know he's going to take hey, care? Hey, you remember that letter I got a few days after I came home with Chris? Had his baby bracelet inside. Hey, Daryl. Hi, Faye. He was snip clean through. The nurse wrote she found it in the nursery and thought I'd like to have it. I didn't think anything about it at the time. Did you keep that letter? Maybe Mr. Francis? No, I just kept the bracelet. It's funny how you trust someone just because they're wearing a white coat. Or a pinstripe suit. Come on. I can't help it. I just don't like lawyers. You don't like anybody. Well, I like you. Boy, there's a lot to read here. How did you get these hospital records books anyway? It behooves them to help. Why aren't they here helping us? I don't understand how it happened in the first place. How do you mix up babies? Human error. Bad luck. Plain old incompetence, you know. Okay. During the two-week period surrounding the birth of your child, there's only one other Caucasian lady who gave birth at Pine Hill Hospital. Her name is Irene, no, Iris Calder. 1515 Bowen Circle. Maybe you should let me check this out first. Okay. I meet him? Look, I, I won't say anything to him now she doesn't want me to. Corey, the boy's not here. She gave him up for adoption a week after she brought him home. Well, then where is he? Who adopted him? Only the adoption agency knows. That's sealed information. What are you saying? He's gone, Cora. He could be anywhere. I'm Pete Cochran. I've been very anxious to meet you, young lady. I've heard an awful lot about you. You have? Sherwin sure, Francis is your lawyer, right? Did he talk to you? <laughs> Ms. Maddox, you're going to find out soon enough that lawyers don't talk. They just spew great dark clouds of ink, which is why I wanted to get your story from you. What story? Who are you? Pine Hill Gazette. It must have been a shock to discover that the child you raised was not your own. You think you're really going to get any money? I don't know. You're still responsible. Uh -huh. I can't believe Mr. Francis would talk to you without telling me. A lawsuit's filed in the county in the public domain. You know, people really like to know what you're thinking and feeling right now. Like, uh, if you get your real child, will you switch back? And your ex-husband, he refused to pay child support. Is that because he knew something you didn't know? Hey, I'm not saying another word to you. Corey! Go to hell. When asked if the taxpayers should foot the bill for the hospital's actions, Maddox replied, they're responsible. I never said that. Corey, you can't talk to reporters. They'll twist around whatever you say to mean whatever they want. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Morning. Morning. What do you want for breakfast? Pancakes. You had pancakes, pancakes yesterday. Up. Mom, you gotta stop feeding him so much. It's not good for him. Hey there. Good morning. Good morning. Little bite? This is the best restaurant in Pine Hill. A lot of important clientele. Mayor, aldermen, professionals. I'm afraid it's just a matter of experience, Carrie. Pure and simple. It's Corey. I understand. Corey. 
Right, Corey Maddox. Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, Corey. I'm gonna put this on file here, and when you get a couple of years of waiting experience, you can just... Say, wait a minute. You, you, you're not that baby switch gal, are you? I guess so. Well, I'll be. Well, you just go after that hospital for all you can get, girl. Man, if they had switched my baby, well, all I can say is those administrators, they would be singing a bit of soprano right about now. <laughs> well, thanks for your time. Corey, hold on. I'm Janet Klein. I'm from the Charleston How Reader. How dare you? I'd just like to ask you a couple Please of questions. I wanted to give you a chance leave to... Leave us all alone and get off our property. Why was Chris outside by himself? Why weren't you watching him? She was nice, Mom. She asked for... Don't play in your playhouse. God, I can't believe it. They know where we live. When is this going to end? Honey, this is only the beginning. We can't keep Christopher locked up in the house. You're going to have to tell him the truth before he hears it from somebody else. The Family Placement Bureau refuses to open the adoption files for us. They say that even if it wasn't the right baby, the adoption itself was legal. So the files must remain confidential. So what do we do? Go to court. Convince a judge to order that the files be opened to us. And what if that doesn't work? Mr. Francis, Christopher was supposed to be the boy put up for adoption. Now, it's clear his birth mother doesn't want him. Well, I want him. I want to adopt him. I raised him. I love him. He's my son. Yes. But the couple raising your birth child actually adopted Christopher on paper. Legally, the boy belongs to them. Oh, Lord, what a mess. Try not to worry. The good news is I'm this close to coming to a settlement with the hospital. Once that falls into place, I think maybe everything else will, too. Okay, it's clear to me that it was the plaintiff's child and not the child of Iris Calder who was adopted. Although how in God's name this could happen, I don't know. Anyway, I am ordering the South Carolina Family Placement Bureau to release the files to Ms. Maddox immediately. Your Honor. No, no. The files will remain confidential to all but Mrs. Maddox and a family a legal counsel. Hmm? Mrs. Maddox, I'm so sorry. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My pleasure. Somebody's notes. Pretty house. Friendly atmosphere. Look, here it is. Nelson Reed. That's what they named him. Nelson? Adopted mother Renata Reed, 40. Adoptive father Bruce Reed, 42. He's a college professor of history. They're a little older, aren't they? Mm hmm. What's that in red? We'd like to adopt as quickly as possible. Therefore, while. We'd prefer a white child. We will joyfully welcome a child of any race. They sound like good people. Oh, look. Here's Christopher's birth certificate. Eight pounds, seven ounces. It says here he had jaundice. Well, this is strange. They listed his blood type as one thing, and then they crossed it out and put something else. Mother, Iris Calder, 25, Caucasian. Father, George Billings, 27. Black. Let me see that. Christopher's half black. Damn it, Stuart. If it weren't for him. That sweet boy Christopher wouldn't have to put up with the kind of crap the bigots from both sides are going to toss at him for being mixed. 
And you're right, Daddy. But then we never would have known about Nelson. Oh. Hi there, I'm Corey. I'll be your waitress. Well, I hope you're here to eat because I've got nothing to say to you. How you doing, Corey? Special today is catfish. How could you raise a child for eight years and not know he was mixed race? Who told you that? Well, there's a rumor that your husband left you because he thought you cheated on him with a black man. That's a lie. Well, if he could see the boy wasn't white, why couldn't you? Uh, everything okay here, Corey? Yes, sir, everything's fine. I'm not a jerk, really. It's just my job. I mean, your story is the biggest thing to hit this town since General Sherman. Would you like the catfish, Mr. Cochran? Like it if other people called you names? Well, then don't go around calling people names then. Yes, ma'am. You know God loves you no matter what color you are. But he doesn't want you fighting and name calling. Yes, ma'am. So you all go on and play. On, go. And you'll be sweet. Go on, go on and play. of me when I was pregnant and I point to my tummy and I say there's Christopher you know how we do that well honey it turns out that wasn't really you in my tummy that was another baby and when I went to the hospital and that baby came out of me you'd already come out of another lady's tummy and somehow the nurses mixed you two up but I got to take you home with me isn't that great how could they do that I don't know but You've got a brother out there somewhere, and we're going to find him and make sure he's okay, okay? I love you, Christopher, and nothing's ever, ever going to change that. We'll always be together. But I think it's important that you know about this other lady and the man who's your real daddy. I don't want to know. Christopher. I don't want to know. Can I go watch TV? Don't you want to ask me any questions? No. Okay. I'll go on and watch TV. Chris? I love you. It's taken time, but I can say with slight immodesty that it looks like everything is going to fall right into place. I've been in contact with the Reed's lawyer, Byron James. He's your mind, Corey. Although they've adopted Christopher on paper, they're not interested in taking him away from you. Oh, that's great. Now, the hospital is offering you one million dollars. To be split between all concerned parties, of course. All you have to do, Corey, 
is sign over your parental rights to the Reeds. They will allow you to adopt Christopher. That way, both boys will stay with the parents who have loved them since birth, which I think we all agree is in their best interest. I'm supposed to sign away my parental rights? Well, I'm sure they'll allow some visitation within reason. It's the only real solution. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Francis. I, I just can't do that. I mean, I can't just sign away my child. I've never even met him. I mean, they sound like nice people and all, but I can't just sign him away without making sure of that. They are lovely people who just want to get on with their lives, as do you. Mr. Francis, I think what Corey's trying to say... I know what she's saying, Faye. But she needs to understand that the Reeds can make it very difficult for her to adopt Christopher. But you just said they don't want him. They don't, but they've got him on paper. He's legally theirs. Now, they can recommend to the FPB to let you keep him. Or they can challenge your petition to adopt, in which case it's very possible you won't be allowed to keep Christopher. Let me get this straight. Either Corey signs away her birth child, no questions asked, or the Reeds are going to make it so she loses Christopher? I wouldn't put it so boldly. Well, how would you put it then? What do you want, Corey? Custody of Nelson? Well, right now, I just, I just want to make sure he's okay. I haven't really thought beyond that. Well, you better start thinking. Because if you want custody of that child, you're facing years of litigation with no certain outcome. Earning your life and his upside down. Now, you're a single woman, a part-time waitress. You have no savings. You're still dependent on your parents. Right now, Nelson has a stable home. Two loving parents. Financial security and all the opportunities that implies. Now, is it fair to take him away from all of that just because of biology? Hello, Corey. Hi, Renata. How do you do? It's nice to meet you. I'm Faye. Bruce. Renata. Renata and Bruce. Jack. Renata. Jack. Nice to meet you. How do you do, Bruce? Bruce. Thank you. Came all this way and don't know how to start. <laughs> Oh, well, I have some pictures of Christopher. I brought them so you can see what he looks like. He's a real sweetheart. And the hell you? We brought you a few photos of Nelson, too. Oh, that's great. Oh, he's adorable. Corey, he looks just like you. Christopher certainly is a beautiful child. You're very lucky. So, what's Nelson like? Is he good in school? Does he hate math like me? He's a wonderful student. He's very bright, particularly like science and reading. And lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did have trouble with math, but uh, Renata's been tutoring him in the afternoons, and uh, he's holding his own now. I taught for years before Bruce and I married. With kids, you just have to be patient, consistent. Find out where they are and meet them there. How old are you, Renata? If you don't mind my asking. <laughs> You're right, Faye. We did come to parenting a little late in life. But one of the advantages to being an older parent is that you appreciate how precious kids really are. And I can still toss a fairly good curveball. <laughs> Bruce and Nelson are very close. You know, it's so important for a growing boy to have a strong male role model. Does he know about me yet? I don't think that that question is appropriate. Yes, I told him. He's known all along that he was adopted, that we chose him. And he's the center of our universe. We couldn't love anyone more than we love Nelson. Since we came from so far away, I was just wondering would it be possible for you to take Nelson to a park or something and, and we could just drive by and have a quick peek at him? Excuse me.
I told you there would be no discussion about meeting Nelson. This conversation is over. I've been thinking you should take some of your settlement money and buy a nice big house for you and Chris. I can't do this. I can't sign away my child. Well, Corey, you got your meaning. But I never got to see Nelson. Well, he's happy. I... Look, listen to me. Look, he's my child. I gave birth to him. He was taken from me. I never gave him up. I knew. You want custody? No. Look, I don't know what I want. I just know that this doesn't feel right. Well, then kiss Christopher goodbye. Because the Reeds won't give up Nelson without a nasty fight. And it'll be a cold day in July before any judge lets you keep both those boys. I want to do what's right for Nelson, Mr. Callahan, but how can I do what's right if I can't see for myself that he's being loved at least as much as I would love him? Well, it's been a while since I've practiced this type of family law. You never gave up your parental rights, and the courts never terminated them, so Nelson's adoption by the Reeds has been faulty from the start. If we were talking about a stolen car here, the Reeds would have no legal argument. I mean, you never turned over the pink slip, so they have no rights to keep what's yours. But Nelson's not a piece of property. Well, I don't mean to be crude here, Miss Maddox, but you have nothing else to fight with in this situation except your parental rights. See, the way I see it, the first priority is to adopt Christopher, take him out of the equation, because right now the Reeds are using him as a bargaining chip. And once that's done, you can use your parental rights as legal leverage to take care of Nelson. So how do we do that? You seek custody, but let the Reeds know that you are willing to drop the suit if they will allow you to meet with the boy and determine what, in fact, is in his best interest. Now, if they're smart and everything's fine, they'll send you an invitation the moment they get the subpoena. And if they don't, maybe everything isn't so fine. In which case, seeking custody would be in the best interest of the child. Would you please take my case? I can't afford to pay you right now. And you'll probably get some hate mail. What do you say? You want to fire Mr. Francis, or shall I do that for you? I've done several adoption home studies, and I think the key for everyone is just to relax and be yourselves. Excuse me, ma'am, but what are you doing here? Miss Kenner just wants to see how we all get along, Christopher. Why? So I can tell the judge who'll decide if you get to live here. But I do live here. Well, I guess what I mean is the judge will decide if Cora gets to be your mama. She is mama. If I tell you that I love my mom, my grandma, and my grandpa, and I want to stay right here, can I stay then? It's important that you share your feelings with me, Christopher. But the judge will base his decision on more than affection. There are other issues to consider. Like what? Like the issue of mixed race. You mean Mama? Mama? She's part Cherokee. Grandma's part Irish. I don't know what Grandpa is, but all oh, that's OK with me. Would you take table three for me, please? I just can't wait on them. You can hardly wait on anyone in this town anymore. Mr. Francis, can I tell you about today's special? Yes, my dear. <laughs> I know what you mean. Well, I really appreciate it. Thanks. You bet. See you Monday. Okay. Oh, oh. sorry. Pardon me. Sorry. See ya. 
Who is that? That's our new stock clerk. He starts on Monday. Close your mouth, Danny boy. Your divorce ain't final yet. Just asked who she was. Your Honor, I would like to draw your attention to... Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute, Mr. James. Your clients are contesting Corey Maddox's petition to adopt even though they don't want custody of Christopher. Because Corey Maddox now seeks custody in Nelson, Your Honor. We believe these two cases are intertwined and should be decided simultaneously. Your Honor, as an interested party, Mr. Maddox is here to express concern about Corey Maddox's fitness as a parent. Is this the man who stood in my courtroom and told me that he wouldn't pay a dime of child support to a child that wasn't his? And then tried to sue the Family Placement Bureau for the money that he had spent raising the child for the past seven and a half years? Your Honor, Mr. Maddox is concerned about where that child will end up. Mr. Maddox is worried about being made to pay child support, Your Honor. Your Honor, if we may have a ruling on this... All right, all right. Mr. Fry, I doubt your client's motives. Mr. James, I disagree with your argument. The best thing for Christopher is for him to remain right where he is. So I'm granting the petition to adopt. Thank you. We will appeal this ruling, Your Honor. away from those good people. I know what it is to raise a child and to love him. And then all of a sudden have the slap that gave him up change your mind. I didn't change well, my you mind. And rock in hell right along with her. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Well, what the heck was that all about? Don't you know who I am? You're not going to tell me you used to be a man or something, are you? No. There you are. Here, hope okay. you can make it. Sure, I'll be there. Hi. Hey, aren't you? Hi, Christopher. Are we going to have a clown at your birthday party? You can't come. My mom said. Why not? Because your daddy's black. We can still play at school. She can't see what I do there. Which one? I don't know. Well, wh wh why didn't you tell me? What are you doing here? Well, when you didn't show up at work, I got concerned, so... Well, your mom said you could use the company. You talked to my mother? Yeah, nice lady. Although she hadn't heard of me yet. My phone numbers are listed. Well, not on your job application. Oh. <laughs> Here, I didn't know what you liked, so I just got everything off the stand. <laughs> <laughs> you sure did. <laughs> That's really nice. Thanks. I appreciate it. And thanks for the flowers. Oh, here I almost forgot. When you get tired of reading, you can point those out the window and check out all the cute guys. I'll just walk back and forth out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My real dad's black. That's right. I'm half black. Yes, but we are. You're not my grandpa, not my blood grandpa. Oh. I don't know how much. 
much more of a grandpa I can be to you. As far as blood goes, Christopher, you know I married your grandma Faye after your mama's dad died. So nothing's really changed with us now, has it? Why did my real dad give me up? Well, some men just aren't able to take care of their kids. How come my other dad doesn't want to see me? I wish I knew that, son. If you were my boy, nothing in the world could keep me away. But I had two miscarriages before I had Nelson. You see, I've been told since I was 10 that because of my blood pressure problems, having a baby would most likely kill me. Even if I was able to bring a baby to term, they said I'd never survive the birth. But they were wrong. Afterwards, my blood pressure got even worse. So I've been on medication ever since. It's just that those pills make me so tired. And lately, I thought I couldn't afford to be tired. So you stopped taking the medication? Yeah. You see, that's why it's so important to me to see Nelson again. He's a baby I was told I could never have. It's my miracle child. Well, she's not here alone, son. You are. Come on. Come on, let's go. Although Miss Maddox appears to be a fit and capable mother, we must agree with Mr. James. The disposition on the uh, two custody cases is vitally linked. Child court's decision is overturned. Adoption is denied. We asked the court to allow Christopher to stay with Miss Maddox until the appeals process has been exhausted. You've only got the state Supreme Court let, Mr. Callahan, and they don't often overturn us. I'm aware of that, Your Honor. Okay, he stays put pending higher appeal. That's all. Mr. James, do your clients want custody of Christopher? Uh, well, uh, Reed's want him if Ms. Maddox is allowed to take Nelson from them. No. I'm asking specifically about this one child, Christopher. Right now, on his own, do the Reeds want this boy, yes or no? No, unless... Thank you. Your Honors, no one in this world wants this boy, loves this boy, but this woman. Now, they have been together since Christopher's birth, and they are, in their hearts, a family. Now, this court has the opportunity to cut through all the red tape and the legal rigmarole and do the truly moral thing here. And sanction the union of this mother and son by granting this adoption. Great day. Thank you. Hey, Hannah, how you doing? Great to 
to see you. Corey. Danny, you made it. How long have you been here? It's great news, Corey. Thank you. Oh, it's wonderful news. Come on, I want you to meet Mama. Mom, this is Danny. Danny Harper from work? This is Addison. Oh. You're the one she gabs to all night long on the phone. <laughs> I'm going to send you my phone bill. Yeah, well, I'd be happy to pay it, ma'am. Hey, Grandpa. Bubba. What's wrong? No. I'm just looking at the stars. Okay. Close your eyes and hold it at your hand. I want to give my grandson something, okay? He's been with me forever, and you're going to be with me forever, so I figure the two of you belong together. You be careful with it, though. Your mom will kill me. Gee, Grandpa, I want to give you something. You give me plenty, son. My dad gave it to me. Thank you, Papa. I'm so glad you came by tonight. I wasn't sure if you were going to make it. Well, I wouldn't have missed it. Danny, I really appreciate being able to talk to you about, oh, you know, just about everything. Well, you're the only person I can talk to about Rick and Karen who really understands. I mean, we're both treading water as single parents pretty hard. Yeah, we are. <laughs> and sometimes it feels like we're walking the same path. Okay. Nick's leaving. It's always Corey. Red alert. Red alert. I swear, I have been so worried for so long about this adoption thing. Well, tonight I feel, I don't know, I, I just feel lost. I mean, without Christopher to worry about, what is going to keep me awake all night? I wonder what he's doing right now. Well, he's asleep upstairs with Jack on our bed with the TV on. No, I mean Nelson. Maybe the Reeds have a good reason for not letting me see him. Maybe they're just trying to protect him. From what? You're his mother. So is she. Honey, I know you said you wanted to do what's right for Nelson, whatever that is. And I'll support you, whatever you decide. But in my heart, I just don't see that it's bad for Nelson to know his mama and his family and all the love that's here for him. Hey, Byron. Nick, how you doing? How you doing? Good. That's that pretty daughter of yours. Oh, she's taking up polo. Can you believe it? Yeah. <laughs> I think she likes in britches better than the game. <laughs> she goes to uh, boarding school, doesn't she? Right, Dale. Yeah, it's a mm -hmm. good school. Yeah, you ever been there? Well, of course. I checked it out top to bottom. Mm. Talked to principals, teachers, parents, the gardener even. <laughs> well, that's a little overboard, don't you think? I mean, the place has a wonderful reputation. Brochure's pretty slick. These, Nick. I mean, I'm not going to take somebody else's word. That's my baby girl we're talking about. Hold on. Corey. Yeah? It's Renata. Hello? Hi, Renata. Well, yeah, that sounds great. Easter weekend would be fine. Okay. Okay, great. We'll see you then. 
Thanks. Bye-bye. What? You're going to see Nelson. She wants us to come there Easter week and we get to see him and meet him, see where he lives and all that stuff. Isn't this great? We're going to be there soon, Bubba. Is there a pool at the hotel? Sure there is. Come on, say something. Okay. I'm glad Christopher's coming with me today because I think I'd be too scared to meet Nelson without him. Why? Oh, I guess I just love you so much you make me strong. And Anyway, it only seems right that my son should be with me when we go to meet his brother. That's why. We're going to go now. <laughs> Good luck, honey. And hurry on back and bring him with you. See you again? You too, Bruce. Well, this must be Christopher. Hello, young man. Hello, sir. Where's Jack and Faye? They're back at the motel. Well, they're waiting for you. Come on in. They're in here. Thanks. Hello, Corey. Hi, Renata. It's nice to see you again. This is Christopher. Christopher, good to meet you. Nelson? Hi, Nelson. How do you do? Oh, fine, thank you. Nelson, this is Christopher. Hi. Hi. If you'll forgive me, I have to proctor a makeup test over at the college. See you then. Okay, bye-bye. Please. Come in. Okay. Well, can I see your pictures? Of course. Look, Christopher Nelson plays soccer just like you. He's very good. He works at it all the time. Bruce is assistant coach for his team. Is this a birthday party? His eighth. He had a big night's the round table party. They got the boys those breastplates and plastic swords, and they all went crusading all over the backyard. Afterwards, the three of us went fishing. We like to have family outings regularly, camping, fishing. Nelson. Sweetie, don't you want to help me serve the cake? He helped make it. Renata, there's a really nice swimming pool at the motel, and my folks are just dying to meet Nelson. I was hoping maybe we could go back there for a swim. Oh, uh, no, I don't think... Swimming's kind of out. See, he sometimes has a bad reaction to the sun, so we have to keep his body covered. He could wear a T-shirt. I think he'd be embarrassed, standing out like that. I'll wear one, too. Please. Please, Mom? Look at those two. You think they've been playing together all their lives? Nelson makes friends very easily. He's popular in his class. Nelson? Not so rough. I like her. She's a nice woman. A little stiff, maybe, but I'd be stiff, too, in that way. Nelson? Not so rough. Okay, boys, come on, let's go. Let's get out. Come on, get you. Hey, let him go. Come on. Damn. You cold? Yeah. <laughs> Renata, you have a lovely home. Oh, thank you. Nelson's very happy here. He loves us. We're his family. 
What was Nelson's first word? First word? When did he take his first step? Lose his first tooth? First say, I love you, Mama. You've had all that with him, Renata. Corey's only had today. I'm sorry for Corey. I truly am. But she has the boy she raised. I should be allowed to keep the boy I raised. Isn't that fair? There's nothing fair about this whole situation, Renata. Corey didn't give Nelson up. He was just the same as kidnapped. So now you want to kidnap him back? Wait a minute. Nobody's kidnapping anybody. But I know we need to get past all this legal stuff and try to become one big family. I don't want to be one big family. What's this? I have my family. Damn it, Nelson! Please try to be more careful. You could hurt somebody or yourself. He's so smart, but he's so clumsy sometimes. He's just a little boy. I love him more than anything in this world. Nobody could love him more than I do. Not even you. He had bruises. Well, he plays soccer. Christopher plays soccer, too, but he's never had bruises like that. I'm telling you, Nick, there's something wrong. I can feel it. Well, Corey, we can't accuse the Reeds of child abuse just because you have a feeling. I know what I saw. Well, listen, I believe you, but a judge won't. Not without hard evidence and a couple of bruises and your intuition. It's not hard enough. Then what do we do? What we've been doing. Seek custody and pray we win. I just can't stop thinking about what those people are doing to my son. You know, driving yourself crazy isn't going to do anybody any good. <sighs> How come you're so smart, Danny Harper? Well, it's the company I keep. Look, Corey, I... Danny, I want to tell you how much I appreciate... Uh, before we say any more, I think we ought to be in the same room when we say it. Yeah, me too. What are we going to do about this? I've got an idea. <laughs> you never told me you were landed gentry. This place has been in our family forever. Daddy jokes about how we paid beads and feathers for it. Good fishing? Oh, great fishing. You fish? No, I hate fish. <laughs> Actually, I'm not that fond of water either. Look, Corey. I'm falling in love with you. I'm falling in love with you, too. This is crazy. I mean, you're my best friend. I know. I don't want to lose my best friend. You won't. I care about every matter that comes before me. This case is particularly close to my heart. I feel as though I've lived through Ms. Maddox's odyssey right along with her, her family. And now Mr. and Mrs. Reed. And although I'm cutting to the chase, so to speak, before bona fide testimony, I feel that I've read enough, know enough to make my decision. The adoption of Nelson Bruce Reed was faulty in its inception due to the fact of mistaken identity. This court finds that Corey Maddox is the child's mother, both through biology and through law. However, what the Reeds have given Nelson for the past eight years in love, in learning, in family bonding, is something that neither biology nor law can disregard. It is the court's ruling then that Nelson's welfare is best served by remaining in the physical custody of the Reeds.
Before we're going to take the decision any further, Mrs. Uh, Addison, we'd like to talk to her. Declare you have nothing better to do than come all the way out here and ruin our lives? What's the matter? Are you surprised by the court's decision? Go on home. Go on. Get out. Can we speak to your daughter? Can you get her to come May out? not speak to my daughter now or ever. You go on home where you belong. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Come on now. Get out of here. Nick says, if I accept the ruling, I'll get visitation rights. And if I appeal, who knows when I'll see him again. The idea of him being in that house is making me crazy. Oh, Danny, tell me what to do. I can't do that, Corey. I can't think anymore. I can't. I trust you. Just tell me what to do. I love you. And I would do anything in the world for you. Except that. It's got to be your decision, Corey. Go, 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 go! <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, come on, Chris, come on! What are you waiting for? What? Go, go, go! Ready for a hot one, please, hot. Oh! His divorce is final. The boys want it. You know, we can't get married with the case still up in the air. This thing could go on for years. You willing to wait that long to get on with your life? Ready? Hands up. Would that be fair to Danny? Or the boys? Or you? doing Saturday afternoon. And this is WNAN, Charleston Station for Conversation. And you're live in the air with Jerry Riegert, discussing tonight a headline story straight out of the Book of Solomon. Two women, one bore a son, the other one raised him. Now both claim to be the one true mom. So who's right here? We'd like to know what you think. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, hey, uh, hello, Jerry. You're on the air. Yeah, I just wanted to tell Corey, I think she should let go. The kid's happy, so deal with it. So Corey's not mom? Well, she is if she lets go. You know, it's like that Solomon story. The real mom gave up the kid so he wouldn't be hurt. And that's what Corey'd do if she really loved him. Excuse boy. me, do you have children? Well, uh, I don't think that matters. But could I interject here, Jerry? Corey just got married. Now she has not only the boy she raised, but a new stepson at home. Her house is full. What does that have to do with anything? Well, in his ruling, Judge Briard stipulated that Corey be given reasonable visitation rights. Now, I see us becoming one big family, but only when Corey accepts the ruling. So how about that, Corey? Why is that not okay? I feel that my son belongs with me. But why? I mean, there's lots of kids out there with uh, shared uh, accommodation, lifestyle, two bedrooms, you know, two sets of clothing, alternate weekends. So. Are you not willing to give a little, or is there something about the reeds that you don't like? I don't really know the reeds. But you know what kind of uh, home they've given Nelson over the last eight years? Yes, I do. So what is it then? Uh, do you uh, think they're hiding something? Are they bad people? I think sometimes people seem different than they are. <laughs> well, that could be said about most of us. Do you others. have an accusation to make, Corey? and make it. I didn't come here to make an accusation, Renata, just a point. I've been talking to judges and reporters for months now, and nobody seems to be listening to me. 
I never gave up my child. He was taken from me. Just think about that. All of you people listening to the show, if you could just imagine that your child was taken from you, taken from your cart at the grocery store, and years later you found him with someone else, even if he seemed happy, could you just walk away from your child? How can I just walk away? He's my child. The appeals court refused to hear our case. So we'll try the state Supreme Court. You tell Byron James we won't pursue the appeal if Nelson can visit us Labor Day. Corey, I don't think that's... I gotta see him one more time, Nick. Hello? Well, that'd be great. Okay, I'll be there. Thanks. Bye-bye. What is it? That was Renata. Nelson's coming here Labor Day. He's allergic to strawberries. Okay. You be good, Nelson. I'll see you Monday night. Okay. Bye. I love you. Thanks, Renata. things at home? Good. Everything okay with you and your folks? Yeah. Nelson, honey, are you, are you happy? Are you okay? Yeah. But can I have a soda? Yeah. We'll get you a soda. Hi, Nelson. Hi. How are you? Hi. Come on, let's go in. Don't touch that cake till I get in there. All right. You okay? Yeah, I just... Maybe I'm making a big mistake about the reeds. I don't know. Listen, uh, I just want to prepare you. This is going to be difficult. I hereby did witness my neighbor, Mrs. Renata Reed, slap Nelson across the face so hard that he fell to the ground. Then she pulled Nelson across the lawn, crying. On another occasion, Renata punched Nelson repeatedly. Be it recalls three incidents where Mrs. Renata Reed pulled Nelson's arm so hard that he suffered from Nurse Maid's elbow. Beat him with a switch. Yo, you're a rotten little SOB. I pray to God they take you away. I hate you. How the hell was Bruce? Uh, after the radio show, we started getting phone calls from former neighbors of the Reeds who had seen Renata abuse Nelson. Now, I have five affidavits here, and I can get more. How could they do this? How could they do this? I knew something was wrong, but I never knew it was like this. I never dreamed it was like this. I should have just taken him. I should have known. I should have just taken him from her. Well, if you had, you'd be in jail. Now, listen, Cardi. In his ruling, 
On July 15th, the judge recognized that Nelson's adoption by the Reeds is invalid. Now, he stayed that ruling while we go through the appeal process. Now, uh, as your lawyer, I can tell you that right now there is no valid legal piece of paper that says Nelson belongs to the Reeds. So I know this is hard, but we have to stay the course and just let the system work. You only did it when I was bad. What do you mean, bad? Like, if I fell off my bike, got my clothes dirty, around the house. Nelson, let me tell you something. Nobody deserves to be treated like that, no matter what they've done. It's wrong. And it would be wrong for us to send you back there if we thought it was going to continue. What if they come to get me? We won't let them. I promise. Nobody's ever going to hurt you again. I promise. before you watch TV, okay? Next, a pack of camels. A North American Greyhound. And here, two bucks. And five flesh. Nelson? Mother Nature's Nelson. own weather. You're supposed to do your homework before you watch television. And his shadow. Nelson, don't you talk to me like that. Over here, we find a... You go in there and do your homework, young man. Now, over here... Oh, I don't even miss my mic, but... Nelson, get off her. Get off her. Hey, 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 Nelson, cut it out, buddy. You never make me do it. Hey, don't no, it's Don't okay. Touch me. It's okay, Nelson. Look, it doesn't have to be this way. Nobody's gonna hurt you here, no matter what you do. We love you, Nelson. Go, oh, sweetheart. Now, oh, honey, you take in what you're raised with. If a mama hits her child and tells him she only does it because she loves him, pretty soon he thinks getting hits being loved. That's crazy. I know. To you and me it is, but not to someone who's never known anything else. You get some sleep. for temporary custody. The judge was not convinced by the affidavits. What exactly would convince him? The Reeds have filed a rule to show cause, which basically means we explain to the judge why Corey's not in contempt for keeping Nelson. The hearing's Friday, and if the ruling goes against us, 
we have to send Nelson back? He's not going back. Well, I understand how you feel, Corey, but when the judge ruled... I promised him that woman would never beat on him again, and I'm keeping that promise. Look, Corey, I don't like this any better than you do, but if we lose, what else can we do? Well, hide if we have to. Hide? We're on the front page of every tabloid at every checkout in South Carolina. So we'll leave South Carolina. We'll leave the country if that's what it takes. Corey, you cannot be serious. I mean, we're talking about leaving our family, our friends... Your settlement with the hospital, the boys' college funds, everything. And running like fugitives. Now, how's that fair to Rick or Chris? Or us? And what about Nelson? Danny, I won't send him back there. So we may have to leave tomorrow. Does this mean we don't have to go to school anymore? No, honey, it just means that maybe I'll be teaching you for a little while, just till we get settled. Okay. What are you, crazy? They're talking about never coming back, Chris. I'm not leaving. Son. I I'm sorry you got beat up, but I'm not leaving. This is my home. Well, this is your family now, Rick. I don't want to be a family if I have to leave. Nelson. Nelson, you awake? Yeah. He's scared. Yeah. That rule thing goes wrong. I hope we go to Mexico and not Canada. I'd rather eat tacos. I know Spanish too. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. I'll teach you, Nelson. There's jungles and stuff in Mexico. We could hunt for cheetahs. She'll find me. Well, even if she does, Mama won't let her do anything to you. She's stronger than Mama. She's not stronger than Danny. Or Danny and me together. I won't let her do anything to you, Nelson. You don't know her. I know judo! Yeah! 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 to talk to you, but, uh, but not on the phone. I wanted to tell you that we're not going to be at the courthouse tomorrow. You said we didn't have to as long as you could call us once there was a ruling, right? Right. As long as Nelson's ready to go, if that's what the judge decides. Right. This is the number where we're going to be. So once you know something, you'll give us a call, okay? Nick. You take care of that family now. I will. What if you get sick? What if you can't get your medication? Oh, Mama. What if I never see you again? On the Friday preceding Labor Day, the Reeds allowed their adopted son to visit the home of his biological mother, Corey Harper, with the understanding boy would be returned to his home the following Monday. Boys never return. A violation not only of the agreement between the Reeds and the Harpers, 
but of the custody ruling made by this court on July 15th. Hey, Grandpa! Your Honor, Nelson was never returned because the Harpers discovered that Mrs. Reed had been abusing him. Objection! Those affidavits were addressed in this court and were found to be no longer relevant, and you know it. I think beating up on a small child is pretty damn relevant. Objection! Mr. Callahan, this is no popcorn meeting. You will hold your tongue till Mr. James has finished. And let me warn you now, Mr. Callahan, that I am not interested in those affidavits. You filed your extraordinary motion. I denied it. I'm not going over that same ground again. What about the ground not covered, Your Honor? Now, Corey never had her day in court, and you made your decision before you heard her side. Thank you. I read her side in your briefs. That argument does not hold. All right. You stayed your own ruling until our appeal was fully realized. Your appeals have been denied in every court in South Carolina? Not by the Supreme Court of the United States. Not yet. boys get in the car we're going home we're going home Judge Ruard, thank you for letting me stay with Mama and Danny and Christopher and Rick until the Supreme Court can listen to my case. I hope I get to stay with them forever because I love them. They are my family. Your friend, Nelson.